Welcome back, everyone, to episode 38. If you joined us before the break, thanks for following through. If you just joined us somehow, that's cool also. Chris, have you heard of this company called Microsoft? Of course. Okay, well, they make things, mostly software things. And recently, they've been trying to make hardware things. And it's, it's pretty good. They make a Surface, the Surface tablets, and those are pretty sweet. And uh, they had what you know a pen. Mm-hmm. That's really just a stylus, but they called it a pen. They called it a pencil. No, they called it a pen. That's right, the pen. Apple called it the pencil, right? Pencil, yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Um, Apple, really, they came up with a, a better idea than Microsoft. They call it a pencil. Oh wait. Anyways, um, they had an event this week, and they showed off some new devices. Um, they showed off this thing called the Microsoft Band. It's like a smartwatch, but uh, it has a barometer in it now. Ooh. So you can, you know, in real time, know your elevation. Well, that can help me out when I know I'm... Um, so that's good when you're, like, hiking or if you're on an airplane. I think it's going to help me when I sit down or stand up. Uh, yeah, if the pressure is changing enough when you're sitting down or standing up, <laughs> you're either really tall or you're moving a lot of air when you're moving. <laughs> and either one's probably not good. Oh, my God. Um, no, but it has like a heart rate sensor, you know, and like it has like some different skin sensors mm-hmm. and some light sensors. It's got like 11 or 12 different sensors inside that watch. And Microsoft still says it has a two-day battery life. It's pretty good. So that's pretty good. And um, they also said that it has a curved OLED screen. So hmm. the screen is like curved around your wrist. It looks pretty cool. Um, it also looks very stiff. Mm. And um, like a, I don't like, like Fitbit. I'm still not a fan of wearing my watch necessarily. Like, I like what it does, I like the functionality it offers. I don't really like having it on my wrist unnecessarily. It's still, like, I know it's like you don't... I still play with it a lot, but I don't play with it as much because now I have a ring, and the ring also drives me crazy. So I play with that more. You're not often. a jewelry guy, you're like no. me, you're, you're free. I, I don't wear like jewelry type things, I don't really wear like even like trendy clothes necessarily so i'm very minimal see that's the one problem i have because for my class i've got to measure my pulse and everything like that after a run i've got to get the right you know uh cardiovascular and i think one of those watches would be really cool you should just got that fitbit i that's think that's so. all you were doing but the thing is that i have a problem with i don't wear it i will run yeah. with my watch in my hand i don't wear it around my wrist mm-hmm. it's uncomfortable for me so i'll run with it in my hand it's not as accurate you know that right it's designed to read from your wrist. Well, it's just my, it's just my watch and for timing, oh, for timing okay. purposes, for timing reasons. Yeah, you should have just got the Fitbit and put that on while you're running. It'd drive you crazy, but you're not running for very long. No, I mean, I'm only running for 40 minutes. But um, I don't know. Like, the Microsoft Band's pretty cool. Like, I, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily buy one just because, like, like I said, it looks too stiff. And um, I'm just not a fan of, it's, s- of it looking so stiff on there. It's funny you say but, that. Why is it funny I say that? Because I was, before we started doing the podcast, I was looking up alternatives for an Apple iPhone on watches. An Apple iPhone? On watches. And that one actually came up. The first one, of course. It's the first gen one, though, right? uh, Probably, yeah, Microsoft Band, right there. Yeah. It's pretty cool, still. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the Pebble is highly recommended. The Pebble is the um, stop, the best smartwatch, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, to get right now. It doesn't necessarily have the most functionality but the functionality it offers is the best um experience Mm -hmm. that makes sense they've got the fitbit surge they've got you know the watch the lg watch the garmin the garmin watch yeah they got a lot there's lots of smart watches basis peak um ranging from just fitness trackers to actual smart watches there's a lot of wearable wrist devices so hands down from all the reviews that we've seen we think that the pebble is the best um yes okay. i would say even based off the reviews that we've seen i would still say that the pebble is all around is the best uh rated regarded smartwatch uh, definitely anywhere that i've seen on the internet okay people like the other watches for the things that they can do and offer but at the end of the day they're like stick with the pebble probably it's still a good choice you can't go wrong you know it doesn't have like a touch screen bummer Hmm. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't have a touch screen. So, if you need a touch screen, get something else. But otherwise, it has a voice dictation, so you can talk to it. The, the first Pebble didn't, but all the ones after that do now. 
Um, so you can talk to it and dictate text messages. You can't use it for phone calls because there's no headset, so you can't hear. But uh, really, like, wear a Bluetooth headset if that bothers you. But yeah. then, oh, just talk to your Bluetooth headset. Can you... So, yeah, you don't need that. This is off Bluetooth, right? Yeah. Okay, so can you have two Bluetooth devices connected to your phone yeah. at the same time? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't... I, don't, I imagine you can. I've mm -hmm. never... I've never tried. I mean, I've had stuff connected to my phone before, like a Bluetooth headset on my watch before. So, okay. I imagine that Apple would also work fine with theirs on the iPhone. I don't know. I've never tried it on the iPhone. Gotcha. But um, no, like I've had my phone connected to my watch, and then to like the, a Bluetooth stereo, and that mm -hmm. works fine. Like it, it works. It's no problem. I don't, I don't know on iPhone though. I I imagine it worked fine the same. There's yeah. no reason why it wouldn't. So, uh, they also showed off. Um, a new Surface Pro, which not surprising, they showed off a new Surface Pro. It has a new keyboard that's spaced better, whatever. But they also showed off a like new hybrid, uh, they call it the Microsoft Book or something like that. It's basically a laptop mm -hmm. that um, the screen can detach and be a tablet also. That's more popular now. We, we've seen the yeah, foldables. It's like a hybrid um, laptop, but it's not the Surface Pro. It's a different... Like it has different specs and like different everything. Um, everyone is saying that it's like the MacBook Pro competitor, which I don't see hmm. it that way because the MacBook Pro doesn't have a touch screen. And it's not, I don't see it as a direct competitor to that because it's a hybrid and the MacBook Pro isn't even trying mm -hmm. to be that. And I don't think we're gonna see that from the MacBook Pros. We might see another Mac that tries to do that, but I really don't think we will because with the new iPad, the iPad Pro coming out, I think that's the closest we're gonna see that's a hybrid between an iPad and a MacBook. Gotcha. That's just my opinion. But then again, I didn't really think the iPad Pro would come out either, so. Um, a lot of the things, we'll see, we're seeing that new, that Surface. Yes. Uh, on the NFL networks and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Microsoft has that thing everywhere. They're using it and they're advertising it like crazy. Yeah, uh, Microsoft's paying big bucks to make sure that thing is seen. I'd you like know, the to... first week they had that Surface deal, uh, one of the ESPN announcers had an iPad up on the table. Yeah, uh, that's not there anymore. You'll never see that. I don't again. think so, yeah. yeah. That was hilarious and also it made news. And I think a bigger deal was made of that than probably needed to be, but it was really funny. Mm hmm. I would like to play with one uh, just to see how it works out. I mean, I've never had an opportunity to have one in front of me. The Surface I, works pretty well, like the original ones did. And like the iPads, you know, they work really well. And Tablets work fine. I just, they don't feel, there's nothing that I really need that for. Like podcasting is the only thing I would really use a tablet. Mm -hmm. And like I had one and it was fine until it died. But like I don't need to buy another tablet to do that. You have your phone. I mean, I'm more comfortable working with my phone. I don't think I would buy an iPad. Like it'd be nice if we were both sitting here and like we both had like a tablet up that was tilted back so like we could see whatever we mm. would or all of our notes and whatever. But like honestly, like our show notes are just like this story, this story. Like, there's no notes. No. It's just an outline of the order we're gonna go in. And we're not we follow the order pretty I mean, well. If we, were, if we were doing an hour-long show, hour-and-a-half long show, I would highly consider it. If it was like but, an interview type thing where mm -hmm. like we had like questions we were going to ask, I don't know. I see like if this was like a like breaking news kind of show where like we were talking about the news that just happened, then maybe so that way we could be like the most recent you know headlines that are out there. But even then, like... We just kind of, we go over what we're going to do before we start recording. Yeah. And for the most part, just go noteless because it's only like a 45-minute show. Yeah, usually. We and it exercises our mind. And it it looks more conversational if you're watching the YouTube video. Exactly. If you're only listening, you could care less what we had in front of us. I noticed when I was reading the stories or I was looking at my phone, you know, just talking. Mm -hmm. It would be, you know, if I did memorize the stories, it would be more... Well, like, like or even if now. you had like a tablet that was like kind of like this, so you were like looking that way, so you mm -hmm. could like just see it. Like, there's a, there's definitely advantages to them, but I just, as much as I want to buy one because I just want to have one, I really just would rather buy other things like mm -hmm. Rock Band music, for instance, because Rock Band Four came out yes. yesterday, yesterday, and I've been playing a bunch, and it's awesome. And that was a pretty good segue into I, talking yeah. about Rock Band Four. Yeah, I I played a little bit while I was waiting for him. Yeah, I was setting up because I had rock band shipping boxes everywhere. It's huge, and it took up, like, this whole area was just covered in boxes. They're behind the camera now. It was great. 
Um, when I got home, there was just this giant box in front of the door because Rachel just left it there. Like, it was inside, but she just left it sitting there. <laughs> she knew what it was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was asking her all weekend. I was like, are you excited for Rock Band to come out? And she was like, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm no. Like, are you excited? And she was like, yes, I am. But she, stop asking me. She was playing when I knocked on the door and she couldn't pause the game. So yeah, she, like, just left it, it going. like... It's weird that it does that if you're playing by yourself, but, like, if you hit the pause button, it actually doesn't pause. You have to hit the pause button and then, like, select pause because people would tap pause and it just, like, screws everyone up. <laughs> but, like, it's also nice because you can, like, hit pause and, like, change the difficulty in the middle of the song while everyone else is still playing. That's cool. So, like, if you fail out and you're like, oh, this is too hard, you can just switch it to the next lower difficulty before they save you. And it just keeps playing. It's awesome. And they did that in the last Rock Band also. Mm-hmm. That was a thing in Rock Band 3 as well, I believe. But yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Rock Band 4 is great. All the new instruments work great. Um, the new drum set is probably the most notable improvement for me because I was still using Rock Band 1 drums. I mean, I had the Ion drum kit also. But uh, the foot pedal is, I mean, almost silent. You know, unless you just like, oh, have yeah. a really heavy foot, which I do not. Which is why it's surprising to me that how much noise the last set saw made. This one is like dead quiet. Like you can't, if it was just the foot going, like you wouldn't even know someone was playing probably. Ooh, I've got a heavy foot. Yeah, uh, you can't play my drums because I don't want to break the pedal. I'll, no, you can play, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll, I don't I'll, care, I'll buy another pedal. Um, no, but it's, it's really quiet. The pads, they're still loud because they're still that hard plastic, mm-hmm. but they're softer. They have more rebound. Good. Them. They have a little more suspension. Yes, yeah, suspension in the they feel like they feel good they like feel the great. they're really sensitive they um you can play a lot lighter and it still picks it up well yeah. they they did a really good job this time with mad cats the new guitar feels great um it feels like the rock band guitars um i don't believe it clicks still though no no click right? it's very mushy I, it's I, not I, mushy it just doesn't have that guitar hero guitar click yeah that one left from guitar hero i personally don't mind it because i up and down stroke so like for me like it's whatever and even when I'm all downstroking, it really doesn't bother me because I don't hold on to the strum bar when I'm only downstroking. And then when I'm up and down, it doesn't matter because I just go till it stops and mm-hmm. reverse. But some people really miss that click and uh, bummer. Hmm. Guitar Hero has a completely different guitar now, so you can't use it. Gotcha. It has six buttons and the like double stack. It's weird. Um, you know what else is weird? What's that? They think they found water on Mars. They think. They think. They can't be positive because it's just a still picture, but they're pretty sure that it's running water on Mars. Now, great. I don't, I really like, I'm excited if they found water on Mars, but I also don't care if they didn't find water on Mm -hmm. Mars. Because at the end of the day, like, I still don't think that that proves that there is or isn't or ever was life on Mars. I don't know. Like, maybe there's life on Mars. I don't yeah. know what kind of bacteria floats around in space. Uh, is bacteria life? That's debatable, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of reasons. But it's just funny to me that if they find bacteria on Mars, uh, almost certainly they will declare that that is life on Mars. Most likely, yeah. And that is just ridiculous for so many reasons. But they said they found water. And um, water's cool. I like water. And also, that'd be good, because if we, like, you know, move to Mars one day, it'd be nice to know that at least there is some way that you can have water running on the surface of Mars, even though because of the lack of atmosphere and the way that the temperature is, it's a very small range that water will stay as liquid water before it either evaporates or freezes. But uh, that's okay. If they found some running water on Mars, then maybe we could all go to Mars and get off this rock. Maybe. Would you move to Mars? No. I'd move to Mars. I'd die in 60 days. Well, you wouldn't make it as long as Matt Damon does then. Good segue. How was that movie? That movie was great. And I don't want to spoil any of it, but uh, that movie, it was really good. Worth the 10 50 It was for me. I really, really? I wish it would have been an IMAX, but it wasn't because The Walk is in IMAX right now. Do they make it for IMAX or no? I don't know. I, I didn't check because it wasn't playing here. So I'm like, well, it doesn't make a difference because yeah. I'm not going to drive somewhere else if no. it is. So we saw it in just regular old 3D or real D or whatever they're calling it these days. It was good. I really enjoyed it. It was really long. How long? Two and a half? It was, an, it was 141 minutes is the runtime. 224. So 220, something like that, yeah. yeah. 
it was um it was a long and the the trailers before it were really long it felt like I mean, Interstellar was the same length. Interstellar was really long, but it didn't feel as long. One, because it wasn't like midnight when I went to see True. it. True. We went to the 10, 15 showing for The Martian. The mm. movie didn't start probably till almost 11, because the trailers, no joke, Gosh. were really long. They're starting to do that more and more. Yeah, it was like... I didn't realize it till, uh I was with Brinson and Chris, and uh, Rachel, and then Brinson's dad also was there. And the Brinson was like, oh my goodness, the trailers are finally over. And I looked at what the time was, I was like, whoa. They seemed a lot. They were a lot longer than I thought they normally are. Usually, yeah. Usually nowadays, but that movie longer. was very long. But it was good. Um, What's the rating? PG thirteen. See, with PG thirteen movies, they have more of a range of what to put on trailers. Uh, yeah, they were all very PG thirteen R rated trailers. Yeah, uh, they were very. I mean, it's Halloween time, so you know. True. Uh, that's disappointing because I like trailers, but I do not like trailers about demons. I don't. Terrible. I don't do dem- demonic movies. Nope. It's just no neither, good. Neither do I. I'll do scary movies, horror movies, slashers. Well, I don't do slashers because I think slashers are stupid. But I'll do like thrillers and mm-hmm. like I'll do like Nightmare on Elm Street, like the originals and stuff like that. But uh, no, I don't do demonic movies. I'm the exact same way. No, no good. So that was a lot of the trailers because it's you know Halloween time. But uh, the movie was good. Good rating. Uh, the rating was PG thirteen. Oh, my rating. Yes. Well, you don't read on rating. I would. Rating. I would give it. Uh, an 8 out of 10. Okay. It was, it was a solid movie. Good. It definitely wasn't... Uh, it was different than Interstellar. I don't want to say it wasn't as good as Interstellar. It was a very different movie than gotcha. Interstellar. Because Interstellar <laughs> was completely sci-fi. Gotcha. There was very little in Interstellar that was really based in reality as far as like everything that they did. Mm-hmm. Some of the science was loosely based in reality. Uh, whereas this, pretty much everything was based in actual science. Solid, okay. I mean, other than the fact that we don't have any stuff that could take humans to Mars right now just because it'd be really expensive and we don't have any spaceships that can hold enough supplies. And there's a lot of those kind of things, but everything that they did was based in science. So plausible. Whereas a lot of the stuff in Interstellar just not even plausible. Unless you really buy into that whole time continuum thing that they did. Which on Interstellar, yeah, yeah, that that hurt my head. So I understood it, but it was just like if oh. that theory turns out to be true, then a lot of the stuff they did is based in science. Mm-hmm. But you can't really prove any of that is no. true because it's, there's no proof. You can't prove. There's just there's no, no way proof. to test it honestly. Uh, wow, this is a sciencey show. All yes, of a it's. Terrible. Anyways, The Martian was great. Uh, if you want to know my opi- opinions and don't mind spoilers and that sort of thing, uh, hit me up on Twitter and I can, I'll can i gladly talk to you about it. Or you can, yeah, Twitter is a good way to get a hold of me. Thanks, Bill Nye. Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> okay, Chris, um, did you do anything interesting this week? Not I really. I like to wrap the show up always just, you know, some, some life, you know. Just packing. Some real life stuff. Just packing. Just packing? Yeah, just packing. I've just been playing Rock Band, watched The Martian. Uh, I bought a new board game. It's called Pandemic. I saw that on Haven't your played order. yet because I tried to get Rachel to play with me the other day, and she's like, eh, I don't really want to play right now. So I had this board game just sitting there waiting to play. And how long is it going to take for one game? It says a game usually lasts about 45 minutes. Okay. So that's not bad. That's not too bad. Um, it's like a four-player co-op game. or like The, the expansion lets you play up to five people because they added a lot more stuff. Really, I think you could play with more people, but the game would actually be harder the more people you play mm-hmm. with, because the game's over when you draw all the cards in the stack. So, if you have more people drawing throughout the game, it's gonna kill you faster. So, so basically, the game you're trying to like there's four diseases that are spreading, and uh, the f- different diseases. I guess I haven't looked at the cards yet, so I'm not sure if it's four different diseases or the same four every time. But, um, and then you just are working together to cure all the diseases and eradicate them off the face of the planet. That's pretty much the only way you can win. You can lose like five different ways. The game is really set up for you to lose. Wow. It's pretty cool. I'm really excited to play it. play it. It's, uh, four, it's up to five players is what they recommend. I think you could probably do it up to six and be okay. But I think if you did seven or more, like, you would just run out of cards. Now, maybe if you had two boxes... But then the board would, eh, I don't know, if you had two boxes, then like the, you you would have a lot of people spread out, but the board would still, I don't know. Yeah. I have to play we'll first to before I decide if you yeah. could do that. But you could definitely play with six, I feel like can be fine. If you just have to do it in the hardest mode, though, what it says to set up, which is like 
seven piles for like all the different epidemic stuff. It's it's really interesting. I really want to play. We should play right now. We should get Rachel back in here. No, you gotta go to bed. Yeah, okay. I am exhausted. I gotta run. A, I gotta run three and a half miles, four miles tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, we won't play it tonight. No, other time. but I'll, we'll definitely plan it out. Yeah, we'll plan some time. We'll get get Trent over here. Get yeah. somebody over here, Chris. Some, some oh, thing. Chris loves board games. Good. There you go. We have Chris and Chris. And Brinson likes board games there too. You sometimes. Go. Hands down. Anyways, we'll work something out because I I do want to play. I'm really excited. I've been really into board games lately. Um, I bought Settlers of Catan a few years ago, and then I couldn't get anyone to play with me for like six months. And then it snowed one day, and I finally got Brinson and Chris to play with me. And then, like, I played that a bunch now. I think I've I remember been, that day. I've been really into board games. So I'm really excited to play this. I've been wanting to buy this for, like, a year and a half now you, or something like that. You guys were planning on playing it. You were at the other apartment, weren't you? Yeah, I was at the other apartment. I drove to Brinson's, like, while after it snowed. And I was planning on walking. You were going to come, yeah. yeah. And the power was out at Brinson, so we played with, like, I had a, my Light, my mm-hmm. giant Meg Light, and we used that to play. Now I have a lantern, so it would be a lot easier to yeah. play in the dark. But there you go. Last time the power went out here, me and Rachel played. Um, she has this Lost Board game. We were going to play that, but we set it up, and, like, I was looking at the rules. I was like, this is very complicated. Let's wait till the power is on so we can actually read everything. That game has a lot of rules. I bet The it Lost does. Board game. It's insane. Um, anyways, we've gone on a lot now about yes. life and stuff and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. No? Okay. Right. Anyways... So, Chris, if the good people of the internet would like to follow you, or the bad people of the internet would like to follow you, where can they find you? Uh, Twitter, never lose heart. That is all one word. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's it? Okay. And if you want to keep up with me, of course, go to Twitter. I'm at James Walter. And um, everything about me is there. Like, there's, just go there. You can find all the stuff I'm doing, not doing. Uh, a lot of it will probably be, like, me posting, like, hey, I'm about to play a rock band, or I just got done playing rock band. Or I'm at work, or uh, I'm playing Rock Band again. Because that's what I'm going to be doing for a while. Oh, and the Star Wars Battlefront beta comes out this week, so you might see some stuff about that. Yeah. Um, if you want to just keep up with the show, because you just want to know when we're recording or when what's going on, you can follow us on Twitter at The Weekly Flare. You can follow us on Instagram at The Weekly Flare, which is really mostly just following me on Instagram. Yeah. But uh, I like to say it's The Weekly Flare, because I think Instagram's kind of weird. I don't really get it. Um, you can find us on Facebook at The Weekly Flare, and of course you can find us on YouTube at The Weekly Flare Podcast. Chris, we always forget to say this, but you can also find us on Stitcher. Yeah. We've been on Stitcher for like months and months. Yes. I don't even know how long. Three or four months. Since like the summer at least. Mm-hmm. Um, we're on Stitcher, you can find us there. Or of course you can just go to theweeklyflare.com, bookmark that page, add it to your RSS feed, whatever you gotta do. Uh, you can find us. We're everywhere that the internet will allow us to be for the time being. Anyways, we're going to get out of here. So I'm James. This is Chris. This is the Weekly Flare. I should have said I'm James. You're Chris. This is the Weekly Flare. And we're out. Peace. Pretty good. Yeah.